Hi guys, welcome back to August Love Story, the channel. My name is Artika. And I'm Tommy. And Tommy forgot his name. Forgot and today <laughs> we are reviewing Married at First Sight, season 13, episode 12. Can't remember what the episode is titled, but it'll be in the dis- or in the, the subject. In the title yeah, of the video. Title. That's the word. Um, if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel, turn on the notification bell, and let's get into this review. Let's do it. All right. Starting with the couple I wrote the absolute least about, Jose and Rachel. Um, if continuing to follow through with someone who is a gigantic red flag was a relationship, it would be <laughs> Jose and Rachel. Um, essentially, what I wrote down, they discovered, they, not discovered, I'm sorry, they discussed their travel differences. Um, Rachel was saying that she was excited to have a spouse and to be able to travel Europe with someone that wasn't her friend or her mother. Um, Jose is like, yep, we can travel Texas. Yeah, I was like, don't they live in Texas? But I get what he was saying. Texas is a huge state. Don't get me wrong. Texas is also vastly rural. What are we going to go see? Yeah. We just want to say you did it or what is it? That's because it. I've driven through lots of Texas. Yeah. It's not very interesting right until on. you get to the cities. I mean, much like Tennessee is not interesting and Georgia is not interesting. The South. Yeah. It's not interesting unless you're in the city. Well, one thing I wanted to bring up because, yes, we do know we did not record an episode for last week's episode, but um, he basically did what she asked him to do, which is apologize finally after, you know, some convincing from other people. But, um, it's, it's like, like these things that, that he's doing now is you don't want to forgive him because that's behavior that you know as soon as something gets on his nerves, it's like you can't do stuff like that. For me, that's a, what he did, that's a not coming back from. Mm-hmm. That's a, no, I can't do it. Red flag was yeah. a relationship. <laughs> exactly. So um, now what's going on with him is she's just... I feel like she's just going through the motion of them. (laughs) Like, hey, we're just gonna have this conversation because like, that just really didn't sit right with me, man. And I don't think there's nothing he could do for me to fix that situation. So um, that was my addressment for last week's, but uh, (laughs) um, we did find out that she buys a lot of microwave food Mm -hmm. and I mean, that's not a red flag, but that's just like, is it, the question pops up, is it that she can't cook or doesn't want to? So I remember having a conversation with a friend and um, back in her pre-husband, pre-parenting days, she ate out a lot. Yeah. And she was, she used to always say, like people would say, why don't you just cook? She's like, because you have to buy all these ingredients to cook food and it's just me. Mm-hmm. I could just eat something really quickly and it's not super expensive and I'll have leftovers because it's just me. I think that Rachel is in a it was just me yeah. situation and that's why she yeah, ate no, microwave food. No, I get that, man. But it's, it's like my just me situation had me actually cooking, had me actually doing a lot of things that, you know, microwave food wasn't what I wanted. So, but anyway, that's just me. Um, What else? Oh, they went to a winery and she had never been. So that was a plus. Rachel has had a lot of firsts on um, this show, like outside of the (laughs) crazy husband. (laughs) Like she learned how to ride a bike. Oh, she did. Yeah, she did. Um, this is her first time going to a winery. It's probably her first time being locked out of a house. It definitely probably. <laughs> she had a lot of firsts. Yeah. Um, no, no, I um, I think that the trip to the winery was actually pretty nice. I enjoyed going to wineries. Remember, I did that for one birthday by myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, Remember, I did that for you for a birthday. Yes, you did. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
So, so outside of the date on the winery, they, as in Jose and Rachel, went with Brett and Ryan to do some type of rock wall climbing extreme sports situation. Um, the ladies won. They had fun. You get to this winery conversation and Rachel is just like, you're not going to like Rachel at home in the summer. Yeah, because we find mean. we find out she's on school schedules, right? Yeah, because she works in the school. Um, she was she was saying that she gets mean because of boredom, mm-hmm. and you know she was also bringing up the fact that them moving into the home, into his home, is the change for her. Mm-hmm. It's nothing that really changes for him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's where she got to the mean part and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I was like, I, I couldn't understand how we jumped from your home to mean. But I could see you wanting to be mean to Jose. <laughs> <laughs> like she said something that had concern for me and and Jose brought it up. But she was like, she's never been in a relationship in the summertime. How? When she was with somebody for like six years? I don't know. Did they break up every summer? Every summer they broke up. I don't know. That's Somebody's weird. lying. But um, that's a... I I get it. You know what I'm saying? But it's like a weird thing to do. Like people, some people just break up over the summer because it's the summer. Like you get to go outside. You get it's to not do that. cheating. It's the summer. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> right. Exactly. That's what they think it is. But I mean... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like that's a that's a concern. That's a real concern. If red flags was a relationship, I got nothing else for them. Yeah, I'm I did, I'm stretching it out. All right, you didn't have to. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, do you want to do Zach and Michaela or Brad and Ryan? We can go with Zach and Michaela because I don't have much for them either. <laughs> All right. So Zach and Michaela started out going to play bubble ball soccer. Looks fun. We should try it. We should. We should um, try it and vlog it. <laughs> I don't want to be embarrassed on the internet like this because <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun though Um, so they play soccer they have a wager that whoever loses has to dance in their soccer ball Michaela lost and she had to Dougie and it was the like funniest Dougie I think I've ever yeah. seen yeah um, so, can you Dougie? I don't dance <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> After they finish playing, they sit and talk about happy times on their wedding day and they show a clip of, you know, him and his groomsmen dancing and around her. I wish we knew what song they were actually dancing yeah, yeah. and singing. Probably like a copyright in French. Oh, I'm or... absolutely sure it was. Um, they played their own music. So they, um, they basically were talking about happier times and how they can get back to those. I... I'm not really sure. It seems like they're on the path to trying to get back to the happier times. But then we have that little clip of Hurricane K striking again. Yeah, I can't wait to get to that part. It's just like looming. Yeah. And so it makes me wonder, was it Ryan? I'm not Ryan. Was it Zach? Or or was it somebody else? else? You just... No, it probably was Zach. It probably was, but... You just never know because of editing. Yeah. Um. So next up, we see Michaela sit down with her sister and talks about the relationship. And she tells her sister that she's in love. And her sister's like, well, I'll be. <laughs> 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 and um, then after that, they, um, oh, she says like the Grinch has her heart and she's grown. And she, after that, they decide to do some type of scrapbooking. Like they yeah. hung up their vows in a frame. <laughs> it fell over. And then they wrote each other they poems. They was looking at it like, eh, that's I good. Like, <laughs> I was like, fix it. <laughs> um, they wrote each other poems using their names. And Michaela's was like, sweet and thoughtful. And Zach's was like, it rhymed. <laughs> it rhymed. It told a story, and I'm slick throwing a little bit of a jab in it. <laughs> yeah. Um. All in all, they both have used the L word around each other, but are not necessarily saying "I love you." I think Michaela might be though. I yeah, Michaela's saying she loves her. <laughs> Zach is saying that 
<laughs> he, he's loving her. I don't know what Zach is saying. Zach says a lot of confusing things. Um, I think for them, <laughs> Zach is confusing. Yeah, I think for them, um, they are learning to deal with uh, confusing and, and troubles. Just for lack of better words, mm-hmm. I use trouble. See, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they're, they're learning to deal with or mm-hmm. overcome um, anger issues that they have or confusion or communication. That's the word I'm looking for. Their communication issues. They're learning to overcome their communication <laughs> Issues. <laughs> yes, you're, over, you're overcoming your communication. Right, because I couldn't. I couldn't remember what it was. I like. I didn't write it down, but I took a mental note. Um, and I think that's good for them as people. I really can't tell how their relationship is going to go just because we still have that looming hurricane K scene to come up, and then as well. Zach said everything that he like. Basically, Zach was like, "I don't want to be with her." And then all of a sudden it's oh flowers and rainbows, you know. So it wasn't it was I don't want to be with her until she's like me neither. And then he's like, Why you not trying with me? Right, 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 right. But that's you know what I'm saying? It's it's like people are gonna show their colors. And something in the back of my mind is saying, like, hey, he wants to be married, but doesn't want to be married to her because of what he thinks of her. Now, there's somebody else that don't want to be married to their spouse. Oh, man, we'll get to him later. But I, all in all, I think they're growing in a in the right direction. I think them having those issues early on helps them later on in their relationship. So, yeah. <laughs> go to a happier let's go approach, let's which I never it. thought that I would be using them to represent happiness let's do Gil it. and Meryl <laughs> right and aren't they surprising <laughs> yes the surprise couple is Gil and Meryl for me so we start off with Gil mentioning that his lease is up in three weeks and he's not going to renew it so um, they're basically looking at types of apartments he tells her that he's looked at the um the complex that they're staying in now for married at first sight mm. um, to see what type of openness they have. And he was basically telling her the differences in the floor plans and he could not give her the prices, which I'm sure it wasn't that he couldn't give her the prices. He just wasn't going to give her the prices on, on camera. camera. Yeah. <clears throat> um, And basically they're just kind of discussing how things are going to go next. So um, one of the things we do like to see with Married at First Sight is the couples talking about what's going to happen after decision day instead of decision day coming and nobody is like, oh, we're going to live together. Mm -hmm. So they're actively like um, taking the initiative to go out find mm-hmm. somewhere to live for the two of them and I also like that they're not looking for one of them to move in with the other yeah. but they're both moving out into A new their apartment. own yeah. space together which that's one of the things I mean you can't do it when someone owns their home right? but that's one of the things that they should try to do more of is encourage the couples to not move into someone else's apartment right? but right. for them to move into something that's theirs together so nobody right. has stake of it being mine <clears throat> um, so Mira was talking to one of her friends on FaceTime and lets her know that um, Gil is out looking for an apartment and her friend is like you trust him to do that and she's like he knows me I'm like look at you <laughs> right. he knows me um, and so basically she was just telling her friend that she's learning to compromise um, the conversation came up about his friend buying a house and him wanting to go by the friend's house she's like can't we just go meet at a restaurant he's like the point is to go see his home. Right, right, right. <laughs> Not to see him, but to like see him in his home while we go to a restaurant. So, um, Mirla is working at it. <laughs> right. We we definitely get to get to see Mirla attitude change. And it's, it's a relief, to be honest, just because I really didn't know how everything was going to go with them. I really counted them out in the beginning. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, once I really, once I heard Miller and her attitude, but Gil has really worked at that and he's able to, you know, sway 
her to a, a softer side. She also said one thing that stood out was like she didn't like how Gil like is so direct with her and takes the jabs that he she said he says it in a joking manner, but she really doesn't like it. But she rolls with it. Um, I don't know if she said she told him about that. I can't remember. I can't remember if she said that, but um, that was something that she brought up with her friend uh, while she was talking to him on Face FaceTime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I really hope that she addresses that with him because if he has not heard that she doesn't like it, he'll continue it'll to continue, do it. It'll continue on and continue on until it builds up and bursts. Um, Gil took time out to talk with his friend. Um, I think it's Christian. Christian. Uh-huh. And he was telling him. <laughs> that I was like, who is Christian? And why are we acting like he he's was a, at the He was at the wedding. But I'm saying like he walked in like a pseudo celebrity. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he did, did, did. Like, who was this? He thought he was me or somebody. But anyway, um, okay. <laughs> Gail told him basically that she pouts and she and he called her selfish. And um, I can't say that he's not lying, but Gil has some selfishness to him too. So. All of us do. All of us do. As human beings, we're selfish. Um, they haven't had sex. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> they have kissed. Um, the only disagreements they have had were about the dog. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, they cut to a scene <laughs> where she was, she basically hype has, has stolen her heart as well. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if hype has stolen her heart or she's like, this is my step dog. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, like, I'd rather take him out to pee than for him to pee in the house. Right, right, right. But um, you know, she she deals with hype now. She feed him. She fed him something off his plate, off her plate. I thought that was cute, man. Mm-hmm. Um, just seeing them two interact with each other, um, Gil and Mirla, man, it makes me smile when they're together. Now. So yeah, now at first I was like, <laughs> Gil, run, run, brother, run. But Gil's biggest issue with Miller is the fact that she doesn't want to change anything like her way of life. And he was he was understanding, though, she doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. Um, so and I don't think that you should have to come in and minimize your way of life because you got married. I think that a spouse should add to. Yeah. Like they should enhance. And. You have to figure out what enhancing means for yeah. you. Is it a financial enhancement or is it some other enhancement? But like, like I get what Gil is saying when he's like she doesn't want to change anything. I get what Mirla is saying when she's like saying she doesn't want to change anything. The the thing it is is like let's say she buys five pair of shoes, we'll buy four because now we have to come together and figure out. A, B, and C because we never know what could happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We never know when one could be in the crunch. We've had to deal with it with cars on multiple okay. times. So it's mm-hmm. like you have to, even though it's not yours, you still have to be conscious as a spouse to make sure that you have your spouse's back. And that's where Gil is, but Mirla doesn't see it that way yet. That's what, that's That's my take on that situation. So Mirla's just like, I have enough money to throw at these problems. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Money I'm, is not an object. <laughs> I'm also not going to stay there. <laughs> yeah. Um, You got anything else for them? No, nah, that's it. All right. So we'll go Brett and Ryan. All right, let's I do spent it. this entire t- episode waiting for Brett to out Ryan about dating apps and it never happened. It never happened. I don't like these like previews of the whole season that had me anticipating something in an episode and it never happens. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was going to be today, but kind of like wait. Michaela acting out and Hurricane K. It didn't happen. Um, so Brett sits down and talks to her friend about the wedding and the marriage Shh. video. Yes. And she said that now Ryan seems like he is checked out. I'm going to be honest. Ryan never seemed checked in to anything. Like, not the marriage. Like, you just can't read him. Right. Like, the thing is, (laughs) one thing you can read is is he doesn't, 
he's not saying that Brett is ugly. It's just not a person he would have chosen to um, J down on. You know what I'm saying? Again with other language. Um, not a person that she, he would have hollered at. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I knew what you were talking about, okay. but they didn't know what you were right, talking about. Right, right. I got you. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and so, the, and that has that's basically been his biggest hurdle. Like she hits every other box except the you're my type. And the thing that I feel like is like if every other box is is hit. You have to realize people get older. You know what I'm saying? If every other box is hit, try that. Obviously, what you're doing hasn't worked. Right. If it did, you wouldn't be here. In this situation. And it's not to say that what you like isn't what you like. But it's one of those things. It's kind of like, what exactly is it that you're looking for? Right. Because you talk a lot, Ryan, that is, right. talks a lot about the connection and wanting to do things together and have fun. And then he's just like, she's not what I've dated in the past. And it's like, you should have just led <laughs> with, I'm not interested in a girl that doesn't look, that isn't 5'4 with blonde hair and blue eyes. Right. Whatever the type is that he had, like, I'm not interested in anyone that doesn't look like this because then they would not have cashed you and you would not have wasted this girl's time mm-hmm. because at this point, it's, it's just a waste, a waste of, time. of time. Yeah, Because I mean, like Brett is like basically having to sit there <laughs> and watch this man not be interested in her mm-hmm. and him not telling her. Cause if you notice Ryan talked to Zach mm-hmm. and told him, Hey, he's not really interested in her. Mm-hmm. He talked to his sister and said, <laughs> like I'm paraphrasing, but he's, it's not really into her there. <laughs> His sister was like, he's not adjusting to married life well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um it's it's like he's telling all these folks that he's not interested in her, but not telling the person that he's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Not talking to the person that he's supposed to be. Cause he uh while he was talking, I'm <laughs> skipping around too. While he was talking to his sister, he brought up the fact that she's not clean enough. Mm-hmm. Um that's one of those things that you actually talk to a person about. That's what you don't just let it go on. You say, Hey, can you clean this up? Or you, I mean, and sometimes like one of the things that he mentioned to his sister was like, she washed her clothes and she left them in the washing machine. And he's like, Hey, won't you put those in the dryer? That could have been an instance of just doing it for her because you can't mess up putting clothes in the dryer. Like, I don't know what the issue is as far as like if he's I mean, granted, she had things all over the place. Yeah, I mean, like, come on, man. And <laughs> I'm not saying that like, she did. I, I felt the moment that she needs to clean <laughs> up, but it, it's it's something you have to tell her. Yeah, or just spend a few dollars and get somebody to come in and clean this up for us. You and this maid, man. <laughs> They exist for a reason. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. They exist for a reason. And some people just don't have the time or the desire in their day to do those functioning, like do those functions in their home. Like there's so much more enjoyment to life than just being the help, (laughs) even to yourself. Like I, you don't want to have to come home and clean up this person's mess. And if you have the disposable income to do it. You can like, mm-hmm. just do it. It's okay to do it. And I'm not saying that they need to do that at three weeks in, but it could be articulated as a conversation. Like, how can I help? Yeah. What can I do for you? How can I help you better put things up? Like I get that they share separate spaces, but that's not always going to be feasible. Yeah. And I don't mean within the home, but like going on a vacation, you're not always going to stay at a hotel that has two bathrooms in a room so that she can have hers and you can have yours. You're going to have to share spaces. So working towards figuring those things out. Yeah, like that's what that's what I feel like this eight weeks is for is just to make sure that you guys 
cover everything. It's like it's the dating part on steroids because he has to say, hey, you need to clean this up or how can we keep this clean? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He has to be able to have that conversation with her in the beginning just because it's like if you don't say anything now and something miraculously happens and you decide to stay with her, that's how it's going to be. <laughs> You know, and you have to work around. You have to accept that at that point once you make the decision to be in this. You know what I'm saying? So um, one thing uh, Ryan told her is that like they sat down with each other. Not skipping around again. They stepped down. This is the last thing I wrote. Oh, it was. Okay, we'll wrap it up after (laughs) this then. Um, They sat down with each other to have a discussion about what's wrong with Ryan and he went around the world to say nothing he lied (laughs) he did he did Um, he basically was like she wouldn't like 90% of the things that he has to say and I'm like just say it you know what I'm saying because the best the worst thing you can do is not say it and let this let her think one thing or think something um you know, not know the truth of what's going on with you. And, uh, you know, that could be a worse situation than just saying, hey, I don't like you or I don't like what you do or whatever it is. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Right. And I think that if he spent a little bit of time not trying to avoid the conversation, but actually having the conversation, he could find a way to tell her what he feels in a non mean way. Yeah. It still might hurt her feelings, but it won't be nasty in the delivery. Mm-hmm. They could still be friends <laughs> afterwards or something. Yeah. Or whatever. Or whatever, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely it'll just be a conversation that they need to have and that Brett doesn't necessarily know about until he decides to have it with her so she's going to be in the dark until he decides to have that conversation and even like him in the talk that they had he's like he thinks he needs to sleep in the other room because um what was his reason he just said he's not sleeping well yeah and um he's gonna sleep in the other room and it was just like just tell her she's messy and you don't want to sleep in there with it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just tell her you ain't feeling it because it's it's like you're not feeling her because you're too stuck on your past. You know, that, she, well, when he like never made it past six weeks or something like that. I don't know what it was with him, but he's stuck on he's stuck on that. And that's what's hurting his situation with her because she seems to be outside of the um, messiness. She seems to be a pretty all right person. Messiness and the fact that he don't. I, I don't know if it's her or if it's her hair. He mentions her hair a lot. Does he? Like, I've never been with someone that has red hair. Yeah, it, like, she's know. not a natural red. Yeah, just tell her, let it, let it stop dying it or whatever. I she's wouldn't say doing. tell her to stop dying because you can't tell me. I what mean, to do what, my ask hair. her or but something. Have do something a conversation different. about it. <laughs> she come up with, with golden hair or something. I don't know. Um, that's all I have for you. All right. Last but not least, <sighs> yeah. Bow and this crazy person she's married to. So start off with Johnny saying that he wants 50-50 in a relationship. And they talk about their future beyond decision day. Because she's like, basically, we staying together? Mm -hmm. And he gave some crazy roundabout answer. Um, Bow just said that, and this is a good mindset to go into married at first sight. There's a reason that I am here. I'm going to put all of my eggs into this basket. Because if it fails, I'll at least know that I tried. Mm-hmm. That's her like bottom line. If it doesn't work out, I gave everything that I had for it. It is not going to not work out because of something that I did yeah. wrong. Right, right, right. Like I'm doing everything that I can do. So he kind of goes over that same thing and says basically the same thing. Failure is not an option. Except we have to put 
running at the first sign of a disagreement as failure because you don't get to go home mm-hmm. in marriage. Mm-hmm. You have the same home. Right. <laughs> like I I sincerely hope that they put this in as a clause for upcoming seasons. You went home this up? Yes. Oh. Remember oh, yeah, the yeah, crawfish yeah, yeah. thing. So um so they were playing truth or sip over dinner and Johnny basically messed up the like the night had gotten back on the right path. It seemed. Mm-hmm. And then he basically told her that he. She he asked her how much is she giving to the relationship? She's like 100 percent. He's like, if you're giving 100 percent, I'm giving 150. And. He complains because she isn't doing things with him. And at the first chance that she got to do something with him, he ran. Mm -hmm. Like, what is your problem? Like, why are you running? Yeah, like (laughs) in that conversation with the hundred, she's giving 100 percent. He's giving 150. I was like, we got a podcast episode talking about is relationships 50 50. And, you know, the conclusion of that was It's not. Somebody's always going to do more of something else. Mm -hmm. It's always going (laughs) to be like that. You just have to accept it. What Johnny is is looking at the situation is or he's taking what's what's called. He's keeping score. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like you can't keep score in the marriage. It is what it is. Unless you want it to end. Right. I struggled with that for a a little while myself. But it's like you start to realize keeping score doesn't make sense. If a person is doing X, Y, and Z, just appreciate it and move on. You try to match or or do the same thing, you know? The thing that got me with Johnny was he got so pissed off at Bow at dinner on last week's episode because she said that she was cooking these gourmet meals. And he's like, you haven't cooked anything. Come to find out they're cooking them together. So she not cooking because she cooking with you? Right. Right. (laughs) Like you're finding the technicality in this that you were there. So you want her to do it for you, not include you, but then do more things with you. You're being a walking contradiction. Right. You like Johnny's looking for it out. That's what that is. You know what he needs out of? Need to be popped upside his head. (laughs) (laughs) But I I understand Bow. It's like I have like she's doing the thing. I'm not trying to say she's perfect or anything like that, but what we see, you know, Bauer is, is, you know, going along with a lot of the stuff. Now, the one thing that I did say was Johnny had her in the conversation of like she's doing X, Y, and Z, X, you know, with the cooking and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Bring it up to her while y'all were talking about that. Don't talk about what you're doing and what I'm doing. Hey, I didn't like how you said X, Y, and Z because um, I don't feel like you're cooking every day. That should have been a conversation on the ride back to the that house. That should have been on the ride back to the house or, or at dinner mm-hmm. instead of him storming out like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, screaming. It just, he frustrates me. Johnny really pissed me off this episode. He he was frustrating. So, basically, he tells her he doesn't think they're compatible because they had this disagreement. I was like, if disagreements mean that you're not compatible, nobody is compatible. No. Because every relationship has some type of disagreement. Yep. And that was actually a very tame one. Like, he was being rude. But like, I think that she handled herself very well because I got aggression issues Yeah, and I I get mad. He's weird. (laughs) I get mad. You do for no reason. Don't do that. (laughs) So after this disagreement, Johnny decides to leave and Bao stayed up all night saying that she was going to learn all of his family members names in Mandarin and she meal prepped and like put all of their food for the week. Um, in these containers and you know got everything ready and then he calls her the next day and is like um I'm you're not coming with me I was like well he wouldn't have had any food to eat that week Mm -hmm. that's mine (laughs) that's mine too he uninvited her to the barbecue I'd be like, one of them got rat poison in it. You gonna figure out which one it is? 
Johnny's aunt, like uh, Johnny went to his aunt and uncle's barbecue and he was saying that. I kept wondering why they were calling it barbecue because they were eating crawfish. I was like, this is a seafood. It was bowl. a cookout. It was whatever, you know, gathering, family gathering. And uh, he basically was telling them that he doesn't want, um, because he doesn't know if it's going to work out, he doesn't want Bao to get close to them and like them and stuff like that before they talked about whatever it is they need to talk about. That's a tactic that you use when you're trying to get out of a relationship. Nobody can have attachment to you if you don't exist. Right. You don't exist. I feel I feel I really bad anymore. for her too, man. Just because it's like if you need to have a conversation with her, have the conversation. Mm -hmm. But at this point, she's your wife. She's family. Y'all go to the barbecue together. Mm -hmm. You create those <laughs> memories. You create that. You go see her before this barbecue and have this conversation. Right. So that then you can go to this. I'm having a hard time calling it barbecue. This barbecue. <laughs> social, this social gathering. You're going over here to eat food yeah. with your in-laws. Just have the conversation before you go so that when you get there, everything is behind you guys. And and Johnny has a lot of growing up to do, too, which is funny to say that because he's older than us. Because <laughs> as a married couple, if you don't want other people in your business, you don't tell them. <laughs> so in that situation there, it's you have the conversation with Bao and then y'all go to the to the social the family gathering as if nothing is wrong. Even because we've done it and been completely pissed at each other. On Both the way of us. there. <laughs> Getting out the car. It just snaps. And, and another. <laughs> <laughs> but you you have to be mature enough to do that and then, you know, kind of control your emotions because he went there with the intentions <laughs> of, hey, she's a bad person. I don't want to be with her. You guys don't um, need to get close to her and stuff like that. He's like, I'm looking for the love from high school or high school love. And his aunt and uncle was like, hey, man, you're not in high school anymore. You ain't going to find it there. <laughs> you know. Um, ultimately, his uh, aunt, I think that was his aunt, sat down with him, was telling him, hey, I just want you to be happy and everything like that. And so, you know, that's where that ended. Um, they get back to the, well, he comes back to the house. They have a sit down with Pastor Cal and Pastor Cal basically called him on it. He's like, you're running. Stay there. Like married people don't get to run. Mm hmm. There's like no threat of violence or danger. Stay. You don't get to just leave. And he's like, is somebody else occupying your time? And he hesitated on answering. But it's just like, it's kind of like um, the Chris and Paige situation. I don't really like you. And then I'm going to say two nice things to you. Mm -hmm. And then, oh my God, we're so in love. We're happy again. Yeah. And then... Two episodes later, oh, I really don't like you. I can't believe you said that to me. Oh, let's talk about it with an expert. We're good again. It's yes. like a vicious cycle. And it's like the root of this vicious cycle is Johnny. Mm -hmm. Johnny having issues with certain things that he can't just articulate. He has to blow up and be nasty about it. And then leave. Mm -hmm. It's like I get to blow up with you and then you have to sit in here in this house and all the confusion that I've called and I can go do whatever I want to yeah. do in my house. And it's just like I'm happy Pastor Cal called out the do you have someone else? Is there someone else? You're just trying to run because that's what it looks like. It's You're making mountains out of molehills and then you're like and I don't have to deal with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> Alright, Steve <laughs> So it's just like he's trying to paint Bao as a bad person but in the end at least from the television lens he looks like the bad he person. He definitely looks like the bad person. Because you can't even have a decent conversation with this person who is really trying. Because if the thing is, first off, you need to figure out, do you want to do things with her? Or do you want her to do things by herself? Because That's the first I want you to cook by yourself to say you're cooking for me, but then I want you to include me in yoga in the mornings. It, it, like that. <laughs> do you want to do yoga if you wanted to do yoga? Just get up. 
up. Just get up and do it. And if you it, know she's doing it, just get like you don't have to be asked. Just get up and do it. And so she's like, I'll try to get up earlier to have coffee with you in the morning. Okay, so she's actively trying something. And the reason that she's actively trying is because you finally brought it to her attention. The issue is beforehand, you did not bring it to her attention. So how would she know? Right, right, right. So the thing is, is try. (laughs) (laughs) Like your 150% is looking real 52 (laughs) to her 100 because she's at least articulating what her needs are and all you're doing is throwing a tantrum and then going home Mm -hmm. because that's that's him and uh, Zach's MO yeah I don't have to say this I'm going home I'm going home (laughs) that's That's all all I got for that yeah I was gonna say that's it for me (laughs) Oh, I put that bow initiated a conversation before bed. Oh, that's where the coffee thing came. In. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so at this point in this season, like, I don't care if anybody stays together. Just get us to the end. Stays together. Like, just get us to the end of the season because I I feel like this is the season of track stars. Ryan has <laughs> ran. <laughs> Zach has ran. Johnny has ran. Rachel should have ran. Yep, yep. Um, she Nealing, didn't get the memo. Well, she left her keys. She, she couldn't did. run. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the only people that have not run as of yet is Mirla and Gil. And that's because Gil has had to compromise. Yeah, on a lot of things. So well, I'm just saying he's had to compromise to her. Things that she's not willing to compromise yeah. on. But she's had to compromise too because she's compromised on hype. Mm-hmm. But he's having to compromise on where they're going to live. And honestly, that's what it should be. Like that's what it is. It's a give and take <laughs> type of deal. Yeah, there should be compromise in the relationships all the way around. But at this point, all y'all got some toxic traits that need to be worked through. And yeah. hope y'all get the help that y'all need. And Rachel, you should run. <laughs> um, out of there. Yeah. Oh, question for the for the episode is how should Bow respond to what Johnny was saying to her? Like, cause he said a lot of mean things on the phone with on the video chat with Pastor Cal. And it's like Bow's response wouldn't have been my response. You know, because it was like she just turned around and was like, okay, everything's all right now. But I, I definitely f- had some I'm not going to get out of character moments. Yeah, I feel like that's not the response <laughs> Bow should have presented, especially talking to the experts. So um, let us know in the comments what, how you feel Bow should have, uh, would have been a better response to what Johnny was saying and, and just overall how, you know, how Bao should be going forward in this uh, relationship with him. So, yeah. That's it. All right. That's it. That's <laughs> all I got. All right. If you guys haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Comment down below. Answer Tommy's question. He'll write what it is in the comments. And uh, <laughs> like this video. Share it to a friend that watches Married at First Sight. Bye, y'all. Peace.